All right, so now we're going to turn our attention to the appendix. And the appendix is just using a little bit of calculus um, to kind of give a little bit more rigor to what we looked at in the chapter. So just it's just a math, a more mathematical way of representing the stuff that we just that we just talked about within the chapter. So just like in you know all of econ, uh, marginal just means derivative. Just means derivative. There you see like marginal utility or uh, marginal cost. It just it means derivative, right? And so marginal utility of changing the amount of good one is just the limit as this change in x1 goes to zero of u x1 plus this little amount holding x2 constant um, the change in x1 and all that does is equal the derivative of this utility function with respect to x1. And here's the partial derivative, right? Partial derivative. We're holding x2 constant. The amount of good 2 we're holding constant there. That's why it's a partial derivative. So we can kind of rephrase the marginal rate of substitution in terms of calculus. So we can do so in two ways. One's going to be a little bit more straightforward, I think, to you in terms of just like straight up partial derivatives. And once the implicit function, I think, is just a little harder to get your head around. But it's really useful for showing a few things. Can rephrase um, MRS in terms of calculus in two ways. The first way is going to be uh, through differentials, which I think is, is hopefully going to be fairly comfortable for you. And the second way is going to be implicit functions. Which might be less familiar with you or, or just you know a little bit more hard to uh, kind of wrap your head around. All right, so let's erase this board, and then we'll start off by differentials, we'll talk about implicit functions, and we're kind of talk about why this is maybe a nice way to do things sometimes. Let's start off by looking at differentials, and then we'll move on to all these implicit functions. And so consider making a change in the bundle. So changing the amount of good one and the amount of good two, so change in good one, change in good two, that keeps utility constant. So we're staying on the same indifference curve. So that means the change in u, change in utility, is the partial derivative of x1, this utility function, with respect to x1 times the change in x1 plus the partial of the utility function, the derivative of the utility function with respect to x2 times that change in x2. And this should equal zero because we're saying utility remains constant. So this is the change in utility from changing the amount of good one. This is from the change in utility of changing good two. And they need to cancel each other out so there's no change. And then we're just going to you know, rearrange this. So let's move this over to the other side. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of kind of isolate something that we're familiar with. Hopefully this line, this next line, doesn't, uh, doesn't mess with you too much. But it's just some simple algebra. It just looks a little bit worse because of, you know, we're moving around partial derivatives and these changes. So dx2 over dx1, if we rearrange it, we get derivative of u x1, x2, respect to u1, over partial of x1, x2, with respect to x2. That's just rearranging this, this line right here. And I just, I just know what I'm looking for. Like, you know, this is the exact same. 
as we did in like the main chapter, when we said the change in x2 over the change in x1 equals the marginal utility of 1 over the marginal utility of 2. This is the same thing. This is just now we're thinking about partial derivatives and instead of kind of what we were thinking about before. So this is one way to think about um, using calculus to solve this marginal rate of substitution.